But the we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. These are strong messages from the apostle. Something is not right in the church. So he comes back and reminds them if any other person, even angels that stand before God day and night, 24 hours, that is not an idea. If they come and preach any other gospel other than what we have preached to you, let them be accursed. That's the strongest it can be. Let them be damned by God. We just build it up and see where we're going, what's going on. Now, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit telling the church. These are the teachers. Paul be one of them that were raised up by the by God Jesus Christ Himself. Especially as concerning the Gentile world. He was a special messenger. A special messenger for the whole Gentile world. Raised up by Jesus Christ. So he comes and plants, then the devil, as always, will come and bring a counterfeit and bring uh, measures that would make the plans of God, as always, try to infringe on the plans of God. Ten. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I, if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Look at that. I don't know any one of us here that has not seen the whole church world of today where they're headed. You see, um, old time gospel inheritor. Robin shoulders with those of the 40s and 50s and 60s, 70s, maybe the last 30 years when the church world started going astray. The whole church world all over. We see only a few that will stick to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have manufactured, they have devised, they have concocted, bring out ways, ways to reach God, ways to please God, ways other than that which has been established, which I mentioned a little earlier, that is built on Jesus Christ and his crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension. That's the gospel. Another thing that is not based, that's the foundation that has been laid. Any other thing that is not based on that is false. Any other methodology? It 
please this me talking about methodology. I turn to certain uh, denomination here. The Methodist uh, denomination. They have, it's, it's, it looks like it's one song. Every Sunday, they will say chant that song. One Sunday, one, one song. They chant it. I said, is this all they know about Jesus Christ? This is the only thing of the whole songs in the book. See, they go by method. Christ cannot be boxed, boxed up. Because he's a sovereign God, he has many ways to operate. In other words, he can reach us through many avenues. If you shut down the airways, he will send somebody that will walk miles to the little village to preach maybe a revival. If you doubt me, ask Evangelist Jonah. God sent him to Nineveh. He decided he didn't want that. Instead of taking a shortcut, he boarded a ship. The ship, we all know about the whole story of the ship. And where he ended up, when the sheep can no longer take him down there, a whale came up and swallowed him. So we cannot limit God and what he can do. We cannot limit him because he has sovereign powers. The whole world might frown at him. The whole world might want to reject him. That he will still reach those that are hungry for him. No matter the obstacles that humanity has placed. No matter how they have perverted the gospel of Jesus Christ to suit their motives. God has a way to reach his people. So we see in this text where we are, we see that Paul, the Galatians, like we know, is a big Roman province ruled by Rome in Central Asia Minor, which includes uh, cities that are very familiar to you if you have read your Bible, like Iconium, Lystra, Deb, and possibly Antioch and Pisidia. These were the cities that he visited during his first uh, missionary journey. And he established them. They were well established in the word of God because they had the best of the best. So when the cat is away, the mouse governs the house. He got other Christians that grew up in the same teaching Paul laid down. They started agitating, bringing friction, agitation, going behind Paul and demanding that the Gentiles, when they come in into join the church, that they must also Obey the laws of Moses. You say, what's wrong with that? Well, that was why Jesus came. Jesus came to take care of the laws of Moses because no human being could 
keep the law of Moses. And then God even made it so clear, so tougher as to say, if you violated one of those Ten Commandments, you are still guilty. So where does that leave us? Where does it leave us? And so that's why Jesus came. The Bible says that Jesus fulfilled the laws and the commandments. So all we're just doing is riding the wave. The master had came and created a giant wave, and we just ride in the wave. All he demands from us is faith. Believe. That's it. The Bible calls it the simplicity of the gospel. That means, thank God he made it so simple. Do you understand, ever think, what if we had to buy this salvation? You know, you and I had no way whatsoever. Because it will be in the hands of the Wall Street giants, in the big corporations, in the big businessmen. I'm talking about those that command in the billions of dollars a year. Then they will market it to you and I. And they still be the highest bidder. So God in his infinite mercy and grace and knowledge and wisdom knew that uh -uh, this thing will not be as I plan it. I got to make it free to everyone that wants it. Give the Lord a hand clap. So here we see as I said, Paul converted most of all these people. A great multitude. You see the main problem, which is these Judaizers, the teachers, which are all Christians, like I said, but they attached law being one of the factors of being a Christian. Not just the church in Galatia, as I mentioned, they cause trouble in all the Gentile churches and imposed the uh, laws of mercy on them. So in his exhortation, he told them to stand fast in their Christian freedom and not to be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Once you go back to the law, you have enveloped yourself into bondage. Because you cannot fulfill the law because of this flesh here in the body. You see, the word of God says that the flesh and the spirit fight against each other. And since we are still in the flesh, that makes it impossible to keep the law. What are you saying, Brother Lawrence? Are you saying then ignore the law? No. Paul even said, he said, shall we?
dwelling grace can sin abound. Shall we because of grace and indulge in sin? He said, God forbid. So it demands that we must be very careful like I turned my title, I don't see any title here anyway. I turned it Two Destinies. Two Destinies. Two Pathways. One part deals with the flesh. And one part deals with the spirit. The law and the flesh. So we see in verse 7, he started talking about sowing and reaping. This is a law of God. The law of sowing and reaping. And we must be very careful and we must take it very serious. If there is such a law as sowing and reaping, and there is. And this sowing and reaping, it brings us to a relationship between the teacher and the student. Responsibility of the teacher and responsibility of the student. A person can be deceived about facing the judgment of God. The word deceived, which is planatiste, which is Greek, it means to be led astray. Some Galatians were being led astray. This is done by the Judaizers. They decided to not to follow the teachings of Paul as regards to the cross of Jesus Christ and what it accomplished and that it abolished the law. See, once you attack the preacher, once you attack the messenger of God, then you are in essence mocking God. I say that again. If the man of God is true to the word of God and teaching it and preaching it, and you attack him, you are attacking God indirectly. So, it would be a good advice even in the present church if somebody is engaged in gossip, unfounded rumors, unsubstantiated rumors, you need to find out as a child of God before you join the group 
and form your own section as the, as the Judaizers did. And you form against what God is doing. God does not see that very pleasant. He frowns at that. And the no child of God should be engaged in rumors, in gossips. The Bible makes it clear that it's even more dangerous. It's better to use a gun and kill somebody than use our tongue. Because easy and very conniving. And so we are warned not to mock God, not to be against God and what He is doing. Expression of contempt will result in the judgment of God. Scripture makes it clear to us. For whosoever, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is a very and unchanging law of God. It will not change because of us. It has not changed since the beginning of time. That's why when Adam and Eve, when they fell, the first family, God made a provision to reach him and have fellowship with him. They had to come by sacrifice. We see that they, he, they taught their children, Abel and Cain, of this very process. And we see where Cain decided to go his way. It wasn't right before God. And we see where Abel followed the right path set by God to reach him. And we see the outcome of these two destinies. One turned around and killed his brother because of jealousy, because his sacrifice was not received. So we must be very careful to what we read, see, listen on the TV. So evangelist this, evangelist that. We must be very careful Make sure we know the word of God for ourselves. Otherwise, you cannot be able to discern what is true and what is false. But the Holy Spirit is there to help us, equip us to discern, to separate the truth from the false. That's, that's his job. We must understand this. Holy Spirit is a person. It's not just an, uh, it's, it's, it's not something we can just, uh, you know, try to picture and paint. He's a person. He breathes. He gets, he can get upset. You saw when he moved in the, in the, in the temple. Jesus. He was able to make whip out of nothing. And he showed his anger right there. And it was the righteous anger. So we see the Holy Spirit as a person. Just like we see God, we have not seen God with the eye, but we know he exists. We have say if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God, the Father. The only difference was why Jesus was here in the flesh having our type of body and God and the Holy Spirit uh, have uh, uh, immortal bodies. We have mortal. They have immortal. They cannot die. They can go through this wall irrespective of the thickness. That's why he was able to come in their midst. They don't know how he did. Because this is the body we go have someday when the resurrection time comes. And so we see it 
if you sow unkindness, we cannot reap kindness. If we sow unkindness, we cannot reap kindness. If we sow ugliness, we cannot reap beauty. If we sow sparingly, we cannot reap bountifully. These are just the laws of God. And we have to take them very seriously. And uh, it says, he made it clear to the Galatians that it is, it is a venting to think that one can outwit God. Conniving. Thinking you're smarter than God. That's what we do most of the time. Think we got it all. God, you know, he's just, oh, he's just, he's behind. We got it. So, in verse 8, he talks here now about uh, spirit and uh, flesh and the spirit. Almost from the beginning, like I said, of the church, the church turned away from the spiritual teaching of the apostles, especially Paul. So we see that the church, instead of hanging on, teaching, promoting faith in Jesus Christ and what he did across, we see some denominations spearheading, building on works. On works, 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 thinking that works will take you to heaven. And so they can spend billions on works. They can engage, send missionaries, emissaries, to all over the world, my friend, you can do all that. See, simple trust in the work, in the uh, finished work of Jesus, will convert us. Will change our attitude. We give us different spirit, divine spirit. We give us the power. And show us how to do good works. Good works become as a result of what Jesus has done inside of us. And not vice versa. So we see... Most of the things that the churches do, most some of the churches, like I say, our religion, as a matter of fact, we see this is where they all headed. We see how the Islams, Buddhists, Shetuism, even some of our Catholic friends, they dwell on some of these uh, different ways and falling away from the cross of Jesus Christ instead of putting their faith on what Jesus did because that's the only thing that is able. To help us as individuals in our Christian work, in our work with Christ, in our sanctification process. Sanctification is your, our everyday work with Christ. We cannot do it by self-discipline. We cannot do it by self-assertion. We cannot do it by depending on ourselves. We cannot do it by focusing on ourselves. It has to be done by the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is put our attention, our faith. We've been, Pastor has talked about faith here for the last few months. We've been hammering on faith. And I believe God is trying to do something for us because that's the only thing that will separate us. That's the only thing Satan is fighting against, trying to distract our 
our faith. If, if he can hamper, tamper with our faith, he got be made. Because many have quit this Christian work. Because they can't take it there. They feel they can't do it. Not because they are trying to do it themselves. What I'm teaching here, what I'm saying here, I learned about 16, 17 years ago. I wish I had no need from the onset. I was born and raised Pentecostal. But not until the last few, about, like I say, 15, 16 years, that it gri I gripped on the, you know, the teachings of uh, the cross and Jesus Christ. They are synonymous. You can't separate Jesus Christ from his cross. And you can't separate cross from Jesus Christ. So all he demand is just simple faith. It will transcend in our worship. It will transcend the way we serve him. It will we will see a difference when we stop focusing on what we can do and focus on what he has already done. Oh, sound room, can you give me a segment of that, uh, of that uh, video where we saw this, uh, yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Rick Warren's church, you know, his son is the, the leader of the youth, you know, department of church, uh, the youth. And uh, yeah, turn it off. Turn it off. Hey, yeah. that is hellish. That is from the pit of hell. I'm ashamed to say that I was raised assembly of God. The assemblies of God that I was raised in would vomit over that. I was raised in an assembly of God that still believed in the Bible. They still believed in the power of the Holy Ghost. They still believed in sinners being saved and bondages broken, but they sold it all out for the Harlem Shake. They sold it out for 30 pieces of silver. Judas! This second clip is even worse. It's from a church in Australia. It is complete filth and blasphemy because it pictures Christ on the cross. Now watch this. <laughs> That's what they do in the nightclubs. 
and they brought it into the church. That was from a church here in this city. No, that was from a hellhole in this city. I'm not even going to show the last one. I, I, I'm fed up. I'm sick to my stomach. I don't know, listen, as I close, I don't blame the young people. I do not blame those young people. I blame the youth pastors and the pastors. I hold them responsible. Now here is the problem. Some of those young people on those videos that you saw are going to die and go to hell because of the lies and the garbage their youth pastors and pastors have fed them. You better mark my word. They're going to hell. Ungodly leadership. We need some Jeremiah's. We need... Uh, uh, do you have uh, that focal few segment we get it quick, quick, where I have uh, working in the spirit and depending on the spirit for your, for your problems? If I am talking about the focus. Yeah, my friends, that if you have if you walk in the spirit, if you have the spirit of God with you, you will frown at that. That will tear you apart. That will definitely tear you apart. That's nothing to laugh about it. Nothing at all. Uh, is the equipment frozen? I just want you know if it's frozen. Somebody talk to me. That's all. Otherwise, we and just his no, not that. You I'm talking about monitors. And Randy, I want you to play this is first clip through with that now. I want my outline. It was something there. I'm going to focus. About our object. Okay, the, the first one, okay, look here. This is just a nutshell. If your focus is, you know, on the Lord Jesus Christ, your object of faith is the cross of Jesus. What he did at the cross, because he said the cross that he defeated Satan, defeated sin, and his sin can no longer have dominion over you and I, unless we allow it. Satan cannot make us do what we don't want to do. He gives us the power to say no. He says it's of power and then love and the sound mind. That's what Jesus achieved. And this for the whole world forever and ever. You can't change it. So there's no point in trying to do something to be. He says without faith it's impossible to please God. Faith in what? Faith in what Jesus has done. And any other thing somebody is bringing up is an insult to God Himself. So you look at it. Your what is your power? Your power, your power source is the Holy Spirit. That's the one that helps you do anything. That's why He's around. That's why He has been around. The Holy Spirit. That's why He's, he's very difficult and forgivable. If you sin against the Holy Spirit, because He does, He just like a, a, a contractor. He have the foreman. He have the man that uh, Pastor Chibito said build me a mansion here. And he got the contractor. He got a foreman. It's the foreman that be on the ground with the workers. That's what the Holy Spirit uh, is. You know, that's his job. He makes sure that this uh, task is done for God Almighty. So we see on the, the result, if you this is victory. Romans chapter six gives us that. And uh, you, you go home and read the Romans chapter one, uh, chapter eight, verse one and ten, where it tells you is that the law of the spirit. That's what does this thing for us. 
And then the law of the spirit works based on what Jesus has done. Otherwise, the Holy Spirit can do can violate that law. Read that. And uh, if you go on the other way, show me the other this thing. I have two this thing now there. If you focus on yourself, look at this. The object of your faith is you believing on performance. Works. Performance. Your source, yourself. It's as much as you can do and go. Then, what's the result? You'll be defeated. You'll be defeated woefully. You, you, if, if, you're, 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 if it's back robbery, and he, he see you, and you think you can do it by, you know, by power of self, or, you know, your performance to avoid, he uh, <laughs> was one robber. Yeah, this man had robbed the bank 20 times. Not the same bank, but the federal bank. And uh, when they caught him, they said, how did you do this? He said that uh, he would sit in the parking lot a while and watch and see and fake and fake and call police for a bank as if the bank has been robbed. And you stay in the parking lot and watch how long it took for police <laughs> to get there. And so he figured out that he is able to go to a bank and take whatever they give him there. He was not going to stay for the five seconds. And <laughs> 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 he, he, he packaged that, he, I believe you, he, he will sell it on the, on the, on the internet. This, that's the problem with you. So these are the things, my friend. So I'm rounding it up. It's Jesus Christ. Everything you feel about on Jesus. It's not, we just have to be able to, Pastor Henry, be able to focus on Jesus. That's all. Shall we stand?